So I wanted to let's start off. I've been to a few weddings and heard maid of honor speeches where they're able to be a little creative and share an amazing talent. But since I don't want you, uh, you don't want me quoting Taylor Swift songs all night long, I decided to do something, make this speech something Marissa and I have always shared a love of. So sit back, enjoy tonight, and simply be our guest. Marissa and I have not always been the best friends you see now. It wasn't like Timon and Pumbaa or Lilo and Stitch at first. More like me looking at Marissa like a princess and she would, it would always be, do you want to build a snowman? Go away, Annie. Okay, bye. <laughs> but that didn't stop me. As Walt Disney said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. But she quickly became my hero, like Hercules. For a true hero isn't measured by the size of his strength, but by the strength of his heart, which is a good thing because I swear I was stronger than her, you know, up until she met Thomas and had someone to impress. <laughs> She's also been my shoulder to cry on. When my best friend Erin told me that she wasn't going to the same high school as me, I don't think I stopped crying. And Marissa attempted what I think to say things like, this bond between us can't be broken. I will be here, don't you cry. <laughs> Cue amazing Tarzan soundtrack. <laughs> and it seemed to come out more like, Hakuna Matata, Annie. You are stronger than you think, so pull yourself together and don't you worry. But man, did that help me in the long run. All Disney heroes have a confidant, someone they turn to for good advice. Mine, of course, was Marissa. She, <laughs> so sorry. We share secrets and watch Disney movies in sleeping bags on my floor in my bedroom because a three foot hallway separating us was just too much to bear sometimes. I hate to admit it, but her late night advice got me through my awkward middle school years. Still waiting for you to help me give some advice, some magical advice to help me capture my own Prince Charming. <laughs> She's also been my source of extra clothes. After all, we did learn to share from Disney characters. Sorry, mom and dad, but they were the ones to teach us how to share. <laughs> our feelings, our dreams, our secrets, we did it from them. We learned from them. We made it work with clothes, too. Even though the Little Mermaid taught us that the seaweed isn't always greener in somebody else's lake or closet, I am still mad I lost my second closet to California. <laughs> I think she's upset, too. <laughs> That's okay, I got it. She's also been my best friend. It has been said that I'm a bit of a roller coaster. When I'm in a good mood, I'm over the moon, but when I'm at, in a bad mood, look out. No one can pull me out of my bad moods like Marissa can. She, no, after all, like Winnie the Pooh's friends, getting him out of the tree, Good friends will help you until you're unstuck. Well, Marissa, thank you for being my person. I ain't got nothing till I have you. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. You've got a friend in me. And luckily for me, I am not only gaining a brother and a friend, so. Now bringing me to Thomas and me, um, I adored having a sister, not gonna lie, especially one like Marissa. But I had always wanted a brother, someone who didn't want to teach me dances to Miley Cyrus or dress me up and have photo shoots like Marissa did, <laughs> but someone who would watch sports with me or go throw a football around outside. What I found in Thomas was not your typical older brother. <laughs> First, I just saw the side of him that was super quiet, quite unlike our family. <laughs> we didn't see him being outwardly affectionate toward Marissa, 
like urging the prince to kiss the little mermaid, go on and kiss the girl. <laughs> and uh, he was just reserved. I was a little worried at that point that there was no way that I'd be getting the fun, outgoing, good for my sister, brother, that I had always dreamed about. Well, if you keep on believing the dreams that you wish will come true, I soon realized he was, a more, he was more like a brother than I could have imagined. I know he likes picking on me. I'm sure many of you have heard the story, but one year for Christmas, he and my sister got me a hammock. How, how nice, right? <laughs> well, I opened the giant box that held my present and soon found out that my present was frozen. Yep. Thomas confused himself with Elsa, the Disney ice princess, and froze my present <laughs> in a giant block of ice. But I knew Thomas had a compassionate side. When, I, he, when he had reached out to me during some boy troubles and basically telling me he had my back, like a good old fashioned Disney quote, making you feel good inside. Thomas, like Pocahontas, taught me Sometimes the right path is not the easiest one, and I have to keep fighting and never give up. Pages are stuck together. <laughs> the best thing about having a new brother is I get to see how loving he is to my favorite person in the world. After knowing Thomas for about three years, Marissa started telling me that they began thinking about marriage. So he came to visit Marissa and me in Toledo one weekend. Marissa had a class, so he and I walked around campus. You know those cute videos on Facebook where the fiance will, or the boyfriend will ask the little sibling for permission? This was not that. He did not ask my permission. <laughs> Good thing because I probably would have said no. <laughs> But he did tell me when and how he was getting, going to propose. Oh, and I got a sneak peek of the ring, too. That was great. Oh. Unfortunately, it wasn't the other glass slipper, but I was no longer a skeptic at this point. He knew how close Marissa and I were, so he wanted me to be on, in on his plans to ask her to be with him forever. I knew at this moment that Thomas loved Marissa so much that he wanted everything to be perfect for her because that's what she deserves. Which brings me to my view of Marissa and Thomas's relationship. It really is true when they say people do crazy things when they're in love, like moving across the country for one. Well, it didn't start like that because even miracles take a little time. I remember Marissa coming home one day and asking our mom and dad if her new boyfriend could come visit over Christmas break. Marissa told me that she was seeing this new guy and that he was moving to California. So I was like, oh, maybe you should let it go. <laughs> but the new guy came for Christmas and he wrapped Marissa's present in pictures of weird looking birds. Marissa's worst fear. <laughs> and that's when I knew that they were going to last to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Three years of long distance isn't some small feat. Marissa was working off the thought, all it takes is faith and trust. She seemed to forget the pixie dust. Although I like Thomas, I was hurting for my sister when she was here working her butt off to become the best physical therapist. Not the whistling while you work type of work, but the just keep swimming kind. And um, Thomas seemed to be living in an almost fairy tale. We, seem, or we saw that he actually was missing his princess. As much as I wanted her to stay in Ohio forever and live the idea of Ohana, because Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Well, Thomas had become her family, and we, she knew, although she hasn't forgotten her family here, she knew her whole new world was about to begin with her Prince Charming. Now, let us raise a glass for the couple. Oh. May you both live happily ever after. 
Cheers.